Hello and welcome to Get Up and Game. My name is Josh and in this video I'm going to be trying out the new Commander Solo rules for Marvel United. Now, Marvel United is a game that I enjoy very very much. I own everything from the previous two Kickstarters but I am very sad to admit that I have played it very little. I've had it since May and I've only played a handful of games here and there. And one of the reasons why is I am mostly a solo player, and while I do enjoy playing the game two or three-handed, I do really prefer to have some kind of dedicated solo mode that works really well, and the shield solo rules were just okay to me. But when they announced that there was going to be new solo rules for the game, I really got very excited, and now that the new Kickstarter is active, and we have read those rules, I really, really want to try them out. They seem really fun. And I don't really know how hard to expect this to be. Red Skull is usually pretty easy, but it is going to be tricky only having one hero to manage the whole board. Now, thankfully, there are a few things in the new solo mode that help mitigate the fact that there are fewer heroes on the board. And the first is when you play the commander solo rules, you play with a deck of what's called a support cards, or it's the support deck. And you pick four different heroes. I have Captain Marvel, Wasp, Black Widow, and Iron Man and you take three of the special cards from their deck and you shuffle them all together so you'll have a 12 card support deck. And you don't use their minis or anything, you just have this deck. And then you have two cards face up and that forms the uh, display for the support deck. And another thing that you can do in the new solo mode that I don't have the components for, but there's something called the battle plan and those are special cards that you can choose to add and they all have a cost of one or two and you're allowed to use up to two points worth of battle plan cards. I'm going to be using two of the one pointers that you can read in the rule book. I'll put an image of them on the screen. I don't have anything here to represent them. We'll just have to remember that I have those in play, but I have one called change of plans that allows me to swap these two cards out for different ones occasionally. And I have one called heroic leaning that says that anytime I use a card from the display here that doesn't have the heroic symbol, I get to add a heroic symbol to it. So there are things in place to help mitigate the fact that you are by yourself on the board. Something else I'm going to be using is there are new equipment cards in the Kickstarter, and I also don't have any of those. But Captain America's got a shield, so I simply grabbed the one from Marvel Champions, and I will be using this to sort of represent the shield. The way this works is this is an extra card I have that I can use this to either do a punch action in an adjacent location, or I can use it to prevent one damage during the villain phase. Then I have to flip it down, and at the beginning of my turn, I can discard a action token to flip it back up. So I'm just gonna use that there to sort of represent, to help me remember that I have that at my disposal. And we're just gonna see if we can take down the Red Skull. Now when you use equipment, you do have to play on the hard challenge, so I have removed my double wild card. Also, uh, just a little behind the scenes here, I have to have my camera up really high to see, so that you can see everything on the board. This game does have sort of a big table presence. So I can't actually see where I'm showing you things on the camera. So hopefully you can see everything that I'm holding up to the camera. <laughs> so we're gonna be facing against the Red Skull and his whole thing is he wants to fill up his fear track. And there's various things during the course of the game that's gonna cause that to move up. Now, if you haven't seen Marvel United, I'll give you the 30 second spiel on the way the game works. You have cards in your hand and they all have action symbols on the bottom. And you're simply gonna play one of those cards and you'll have access to all the actions on that card as well as the previous card that was played. So after the first turn, there will always be two cards worth of actions for you to make use of. So there's a lot of cool teamwork involved in choosing which actions to take because they, they might benefit the next player as well. You're trying to complete three missions by rescuing nine civilians, defeating nine thugs, and clearing four of the threats. Every villain has a different set of threat cards that go on these locations. And you have to complete two of these missions before you can actually start attacking the villain. So I need to either f remove four threats, defeat nine thugs, uh, rescue nine civilians, some combination of two of those, in order to actually attack Red Skull. But once you complete one, the villain starts acting more frequently, so it gets a little bit harder. If I can complete these threats on the board, they reveal useful abilities on the locations that I can take advantage of. If I don't forget, I often forget the end of turn actions. And that's pretty much everything you need to know. Everything else I'll explain as we go. So to start the game, you just draw three cards into your hand out of your hero deck, just like you normally would. 
So I have two copies of a double heroic action and one copy of just one movement, so not a terribly exciting hand. But I also can play with the cards from the support deck. So the way the game goes, the villain always goes first, so we'll just go ahead and reveal their card. So you just follow the card from top to bottom, it tells you everything the villain wants to do. And so here we see that the villain is not moving, they are going to trigger their BAM special ability, and then they're going to have some special text here as well. So we'll just set this right down here. I'm just going to sort of make a stack for the storyline. I don't really have room to go around the board or anything, so I'm just going to have them sort of piled up to make sure I can see the symbols. So we know that he is not going to move because it told us zero. His BAM is his special ability. It tells us to deal one damage to each hero in his location. There currently aren't any, but we do also have to increase the fear track by two. So that's at two of 20. And then it had special text, Hydra Insurgency, for each crisis token the heroes have, advance the fear track by one. We don't currently have any crisis tokens, and those look like this, and they are simply tokens that Red Skull might hand out every now and then, and then the villain will always tell you what these are for. The crisis tokens don't have rules of their own. And we don't have any crisis tokens, so we don't have to worry about that either. So that was actually a pretty easy card. And once the villain takes their turn, the hero takes theirs. Now, in the Commander Solo rules, the hero always have to has to play one of their cards immediately after the villain goes and then the heroes take three turns total and so I'll have to play a card and then I'll have two more actions but for the second two I can choose to use from the support deck if I want to and if you ever can't play any of your cards you lose the game so you definitely want to be making use of the support cards otherwise you'll go through your own deck too fast so we just have to decide what I want to do. Now the movement actions are pretty straightforward. They just let you move clockwise or counterclockwise. This is just meant to be a circle. The heroic actions let you either rescue civilians from your location and put them on the rescue civilians action or put heroic tokens on the threat cards here. And once you get three or however many symbols it shows, you get to clear that threat. And that's just one less thing Red Skull gets to do. So we just need to decide. We have to play one of our own cards because the villain just went. And so we definitely want to clear some of these threats because these can be pretty bad. Now the one on the location I'm on now, it says Subversion. It has this symbol that means if the villain ends their movement here, it triggers this special ability. And it's not great right now. It's not much of a threat though. But still, it would give me something to do. I could just move for one. It's not very exciting. I think just to get started here, I'm going to play my double heroic action. I'm just going to put it right here over Red Skull so I can see the two actions. And I'm going to use one of the heroic symbols to rescue my first civilian. And then I'm going to use another one to get a heroic token. Again, I can only hope you can see what I'm holding up uh, to put that on there. And once I get three on here, I get to clear this, which will not only reveal a helpful action, but it will also, this token will move here to the clear threats. And that'll be the first of four that I need to clear. And that's my whole turn. You draw a card, you play a card, and you're done. So now I get to take two more turns yet, and now that I've taken one, I can choose to use a card here if I wanted to. So we could have Black Widow's card where I would get to do a punch, and I would also get to see what Red Skull's going to do next. She interrogates them. Or I could use Captain Marvel's Photon Blast to do two punches in one adjacent location, and then also have access to another punch. Well, there's not a whole lot left to do in my area, so I probably really should move. And so what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to draw, I'm going to take a regular hero turn, which means I draw a card. I get two more. Wow, Captain America really has a lot of heroic actions. I said at the beginning, I haven't played this a ton, and I really haven't, so I'm not nearly as familiar with the heroes and villains as I probably should be. And so you're not going to get a tutorial on excellent strategy here. I don't know how to make good matchups or anything yet, but I'm hoping to play this a lot more. The new Kickstarter's got me really excited about these new rules, and I've been meaning to get this out more anyway, so I think now is the time for me to start playing this game more. So I'm going to add this here, and now I have a movement and two heroic. You always have the previous card's action symbols as well. So, And you can use them in any order. So I'm going to use the two heroic symbols to go ahead and clear this card off. Now that there's three tokens on it, this threat has been cleared. And so this simply gets removed from the game. And this token moves to the clear threats mission. So now I've started that. Now, if I ended my turn here in Heimdall's Observatory, I would get to move any number of heroes from any locations to this location. Well, I'm not going to end my turn here anyway, but right now that's not particularly useful. And now we're just going to use our movement to go here, I think, which might not be a great idea. 
because now I'm starting my turn in this location with Bob, Agent of Hydra. This threat here, he's a, some threats have special abilities like the one we saw before, and some are henchmen that have health and can be defeated enemies, and but they also have special abilities. In this case, Bob gives us crisis tokens. So I'll just take my crisis token here and keep it right here. And we've seen already that Red Skull cares about the crisis tokens. The more you have, the worse it is for you. And so now I think I'm going to use a card from the support deck. Like I said, you don't you don't want to just keep using your own cards. You'll run through your own deck pretty fast. And I also have to remember that I have the heroic leaning battle plan. So if I play a card from here that doesn't have a heroic symbol, it's going to have an extra heroic symbol. So that's going to be really nice. So we're going to play Captain Marvel's Photon Blast right here. So we have the previous cards. So we have a movement, we have a punch, and then her special ability is the Photon Blast does two punches in one adjacent location. And again, you can do them in any order. So I don't want to end my turn here in Xandar with Bob or I'm going to get another Crisis Token. It is risky to hang out with Madam Hydra, but that's what we're going to do. We are going to use, we have a heroic action because of the heroic leaning. So we'll use that to put that there. We do have one punch from this card, so we will use that to punch Bob. We're gonna use the movement symbol to move over here, and then we're gonna Photon Blast to hit Bob two more times. We'd really like to knock him out. We do not wanna be getting those Crisis Tokens. So that is all of our actions. Now that's gonna be the end of our turn. We took three hero actions, and now the villain always acts after three turns. So we're gonna draw the next villain turn and now it tells us that he is going to move two spaces clockwise he's going to bam and he's going to put out some more tokens so let's just see how that works he goes here and here this does have a when he ends his turn there symbol if there's a better name for it i don't know what it is and it says heroes in this and adjacent locations take one crisis token each so if we were in anywhere in this half of the board we would get a crisis token thankfully we don't but as long as that's there we need to be aware of that that if we're gonna be hanging out there, we really wanna hope he doesn't land there. Now he's gonna bam, there are no heroes for him to damage, but the fear track goes up by two more. And now what this does is it shows us that he wants to lay out some more civilians on the board. Sometimes it's civilians, sometimes it's thugs. And the pattern here shows you which ones to put out. So he's putting a civilian here. He's putting two civilians in his own location. Right there and there. And if there wasn't room for it, that would trigger an overflow, which would be bad. But thankfully, there is currently room for everyone. But a big part of the early game, he's going to put a civilian here as well. A big part of the early game is just trying to keep the locations as clear of tokens as you can while you're simultaneously using that to complete the missions. Because when they have to put tokens out and they can't, you get an overflow, which is, you know, it's special for every villain and it's, it's not good. It's kind of like an outbreak in pandemic. It causes all kinds of problems. So that was his whole card. He's done. And now this should have refreshed. Now if I want to, because I have the change of plans battle plan card, I could wipe these and get two new ones. And I think I will because nothing I have has any movement. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on the bottom and get two new ones. Hopefully I see some movement. Nope, I just get a whole bunch of interrogate. Well, that's how that goes. Now I have to take a hero action Oh, one thing I missed, one thing I missed. When the villain bams, also all of the threats that have a bam also bam. So if you know this game, you're probably shouting at me right now. Yes, since I was in Madam Hydra's space, her bam says deal one damage to each hero in this location. Any hero can prevent this effect by taking a crisis token. So I could take another crisis token or I could take a damage. And the way you take damage, you simply discard a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. And I think I'm okay with that. So basically my choices are going to be limited now. I only have sort of two health, and so I have fewer options of different cards in my hand to play. But I don't want to be taking too many Crisis Tokens because that's going to push up his track. And then we just look at Crossbones here. His is deal two damage to each here in this location. So his is the same thing, it's just worse, uh, stronger than Madam Hydra. But yeah, you always have to be keeping an eye on everything that bams and just all of the threat cards. You need to be aware of what they do because they could affect things in different ways. So now I have to take a hero turn because Red Skull just went. So we're going to go draw a card. Oh, good. We did get some movement. So if we want to go somewhere, we can. And I do quite want to try to take out, you know, these threats are 
pretty scary. These henchmen can be tough. They cause all kinds of problems. I could, if I move here, I could punch out Bob, Agent of Hydra, which would be nice. I would finish him off. There's not much else going on over here. Adam Hydra has five health, which I could do a pretty good amount of damage to her. You know what, I think I'm just gonna hang out here with Madam Hydra for now. We're gonna put this here so I have the one punch from before and two more. I'm just gonna hit her for three, leaving her with two health. Let's see if we can't get rid of her during this round and then we just won't have to worry about her anymore. So that is the end of that turn. And then yeah, we'll use one of Black Widow's cards because I really wanna get some different cards in here. We're gonna use Black Widow's. And since it doesn't have a heroic symbol, I automatically get a free one for the heroic leaning battle plan. Oh, and I need to remember, I also have my shield. Let's not forget that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get back to that in a second, but I am gonna use the shield here. So I have three total punches. We're gonna use two of them to finish off Madam Hydra. So she goes away, which will clear this threat. And we have one punch left, which will knock out this thug, get that started. And we can interrogate, we can look at the top card of Red Skull's deck, and since we still have another turn after this, this could be useful information. So we know he's going to stay put, and he's going to discard all the civilians from locations with heroes and deal damage, advance the fear track. So we want to make sure, if we can, that there's no civilians in our location before he takes his next turn. So that is very good to know. And then... Actually, I also have a heroic action because of the heroic leaning battle plan. So I will just use that to save that civilian. That worked out great. So we don't even have to worry about it. Now I can take the end of turn action. You may discard an action token to draw a card. I don't have any action tokens. Sometimes you get tokens that sit in front of you and there are extra actions you can take on your turn. But I don't currently have any, so I can't take advantage of that. This refreshes. All right, now I have some a little, little bit more options here. So I have the Wasp Wings I, have, I could play. You may move yourself and any number of heroes from your location to any other location. That's, that's nice. That's the kind of thing I was looking for. Because I think one of the things that's going to make this challenge pretty difficult is the fact that you're all by yourself. So you need things like good movement. Something else I want to do before I take the next turn is I'm going to use my shield. I'll try to put a picture of it if I can find a good one online. But basically it lets me do a damage to a, an enemy in an adjacent location. You chuck it, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna throw the shield at Bob, Agent of Hydra, knocking him out. That is gonna remove his threat and clear that. So we've already cleared three of the four threats that we need to, but you need to be careful because when you complete your first mission, the villain starts acting after every two hero actions. And so you kinda wanna defeat your two missions around the same time so that doesn't happen for too long. So we've taken two turns, so we can still take one more. I'm going to have a punch no matter what I do. We know Red Skull's not going to move. He's also not going to bam. And we just want to make sure that we are not in a location with any civilians. Well, I think I'm going to have to take a Captain America turn because no matter where I go with the wings, I'm going to end up with a civilian and I don't have any heroic actions along with that to clear them. So we're going to hope to get like a move and a heroic maybe and save the wasp wings for later. So we're going to take a Captain America action. Well, we didn't get the heroic, but we do get leadership, which is going to give us a wild token. I think I think we'll go ahead and take advantage of that. So we're going to play the leadership card. That gives a wild token from the pool to another hero. And then the commander solo rules, another hero just means you. So we are going to get a wild token. We can use that for any of the actions. Now we have a move, a punch, and this uh, wild token if we want it. So we're going to use the move to go here. We're gonna use the punch to hit this thug, or should I start working on crossbones? I think I really need to defeat a lot of thugs. There aren't very many on the board, which is one thing that's tricky. I don't know if we're gonna be able to complete that mission actually, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna hit crossbones for one. He had six health, now he's down to five. And then I'm gonna use my wild action token here to save this civilian. So I'm gonna use it as a hero. That way I'm not in a location with any civilians for what's about to happen. And that, I think, is all I can do. So now Red Skull's going to take his next turn. And we already know what he's going to do. He's not going to move. Discard all civilians from locations with heroes and deal da one damage to each of those heroes. I don't think you take the damage if there were no civilians there, the way that reads. 
So I think that's how that works. And then advance the fear track with the number of civilians discarded this way. Well, there weren't any, so that is good. So it sure is nice to know what the villain is going to do on their turn. So next it's us and we have to take a Captain America turn. I feel like I'm going through my deck really fast. So I should probably try to use more of the support actions. And I can get my shield back if I spend an action token at the beginning of my turn. I don't have any tokens right now, but if I end up with some, I could use it to get my shield back if I want to. That way I could then use it to punch in an adjacent location, and you can also use it to prevent a damage during the villain phase. So it's incredibly useful. But right now I have access to a movement. So what do I want to do? I kind of want to keep working on crossbones now that I've started it, but I also don't want to be in too big of a hurry to clear this because I should probably try to rescue some more civilians. So I think that's actually my new goal. Yeah, this is going to be nice. I'm going to use my dero double heroic here. So we've got the movement here. So move here. Now we have to be careful the Hydra elite troops in this location. The thugs take two damage to be defeated. And that's why I have two thugs stacked up like that. It doesn't tell you to do that in the rules or anything. But that's just going to help me remember that if I do want to punch the thugs there, you have to do two damage in the same turn to knock those thugs out. So, Or you need to get rid of this threat, one or the other. And I often forget uh, when the thugs are stronger, so I put an extra token there to help me remember. So we moved, and then I have two heroic. We're just going to use it to rescue two more civilians. Try to get us closer to completing this mission. Be nice to double them up at the same time. So that is our first turn. So we have two more we get to take. Now we can use support deck cards. And I'm gonna have two heroics already. And I'd really like to try to clean this mess up here because there's a lot going on there. And sometimes it seems like Red Skull doesn't move very much. So he might try to put a bunch more tokens there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use Wasp here for her wings. And since you can do things in any order, First, I'm going to use the move action to go here. I'm going to use the two heroics to rescue these two civilians to try to clear this location off a little bit. And now, because I don't want to be hanging out with Red Skull in case he bams on me, I'm going to use the wings ability. You may move yourself and any number of heroes from your location to any other location. I'm just going to fly on down to Xandar here and just grab the, an assortment of locations with different abilities. Not a very strong theme in this one. But now that we ended our turn in Xandar, we can take advantage of this action. You may draw until you have three cards in your hand. So now I'm back to full health. It does kind of get me through my deck a little faster, I guess, but this way I have more options. So that is my second turn. And I'm gonna have a movement. This refreshes, and now we have some nice damage from Captain Marvel to choose from. Now the one thing about flying down here is I did kind of take myself away from the action. I think what I'm going to do is, because I don't want to run through my deck too fast and I have to play a card at least once around, I'm going to use this Captain Marvel Photon Blast. It's uh, going to give me a punch now, a movement from the previous card, and I also get two punches in an adjacent location. Well, I'm going to use the movement to go here. And this punch is just going to end up getting wasted. That happens sometimes. It's, it's totally fine but I get to do two punches in an adjacent location. I'm gonna punch crossbones a couple times here. So it looks like he's got about three health left. So we Captain Marvel blasted him from New York to the Asgardian Palace. Good job, Captain Marvel. That was our third turn. Now we've got some Iron Man action. He has the power recharge. You may draw until you have three cards in your hand. So it's a nice healing card. We don't really need it right now though. And I don't have any action tokens to do anything else. So that is just gonna be the end of my turn. Now Red Skull is gonna go. And yeah, he did zero and bam, so I'm really glad I got out of there when I did. So he's not going to move. He is going to bam, which won't deal any damage, but is going to increase the fear track again. And then for each crisis token the heroes have, advance the fear track by one. Yeah, this is why you need to be careful. You don't want to take too many crisis tokens in this scenario because his cards just get worse and worse over the course of the game. So we know the drill. We have to take a hero turn after the villain goes, so we'll draw a card. Oh, we get one of our specials, leadership. I get a wild token that is really nice we saw that earlier and a token would be nice to get our shield back but wild tokens are also very valuable on their own so we have a couple options here we have a move and a punch or we could just take any action or punch and get a token and we're already getting a punch 
Well, we just need to rescue one more civilian and clear one more threat, and then we can start attacking Red Skull. So let's see if we can make that happen soon. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this move and a punch card. And then, so what that means is we have a move and two punches. So I'm going to move here. I'm just going to punch Crossbones two more times. This big dumb face. And that is going to be the end of that turn. Sorry, Crossbones, that was mean. I shouldn't have said that. And now we're going to have a move and a punch again this turn. That is going to be really, really nice. Because I think we can set ourselves up pretty well here. We're going to use Iron Man for the power recharge, which that would let us draw until we have three cards. We don't need that, but really what I wanted was the heroic symbol. Though I need to remember I have the heroic leaning. It's hard when you don't actually have the components. I'm just trying to remember I have those little battle plan cards. I have the heroic leaning, so if I do play a card from here that doesn't have a heroic, I have access to it. But that's okay. So we have a move and a punch and a heroic symbol. So we're going to use the punch to finish off crossbones. So this threat has been completed. And this mission has been completed. Now what that means is we've completed the first mission. So villain acts after every two hero cards. It's called being under pressure. And it doesn't matter what order you complete the missions in. Just whichever one you complete first triggers this, and whichever one you complete second triggers that. And then optionally, if you do complete the third mission, everybody gets to draw a card, all the heroes in the game. So everybody gets to heal one if you manage to complete all three. So that doesn't always happen, and clearly I'm not gonna defeat eight more thugs probably before the end of the game. But it is nice when you can. All right, so now all I've used is my punch, so I still have my move, and I have a heroic. So I have also completed the second mission, so now the villain is vulnerable to damage. Now I just need to catch up to Red Skull and deal four damage to him, and that'll be the game. Well, we've gone twice, and he is under pressure, so now it's gonna be the Red Skull's turn. Let's see what he's gonna do. He's gonna move four, so he knows he's in trouble. He's running away. One, two, three, four. Well, he just came right back around to me, I guess. And he's gonna put out a bunch of tote well he's gonna do is bam so he's gonna deal damage but we're not in a space he's gonna increase fear track by two so he's almost halfway done and he's gonna put out a bunch of thugs so let's get those out so he's gonna put one here he's gonna put two in his location so it's a good thing i cleaned that up a little bit and one where i am and those are actually doubled up thanks to the Hydra Elite troops. So I'll just continue to put them out two at a time so I don't forget. All right, there we go. So that is the end of his turn. But he ran right around to us, so it shouldn't be too hard to catch up to him. We just need to deal some damage. This should refill. And now if I want to, I could refresh these because I have the change of plans. But I'm kind of liking the look of this Iron Man card here, so I'm just going to leave those right there. We have to take a hero turn because Red Skull just went. We are getting low on cards, so we got to push it. And really, we just want to move where he is and let him have it. So we're just going to go ahead and use this move and a punch card. And we saw the heroic from the previous card, but I don't think we're going to end up doing much of that. I mean, we might as well throw this on here, I suppose, but I don't think it's going to matter. Then we have a move and a punch. We're just going to move and we're going to punch. Keep it nice and simple. So he just has three health left. And we get to take one more turn. We're going to play the advanced combat analysis. It gives us a movement and distribute two punch tokens from the pool among any number of heroes. So that gives us two punch tokens to go along with the punch on the previous card, which will be enough to deal three damage to Red Skull. <laughs> well, you can see the tokens. <laughs> just trying to do a cool flourish. And that is going to win us the game. So that was pretty simple, but Red Skull usually isn't too difficult. I'm really excited to try this with some of the more complex villains, maybe some of the more difficult ones. This definitely is going to inspire me to play this game more. I really, really enjoyed this, and I like being able to play with just one hero and not having to try to manage everybody around the board, multiple hands. 
I really, really like these rules. I, I can't speak to the challenge of it. Just red skulls, like I said, usually not too hard, but there are so many ways to modify the difficulty. You know, I played on the hard challenge. You could play on the heroic challenge that removes another card from your deck. You could play with fewer battle plan cards that give you less options. But my boy's waking up from his nap, so that is my cue to get out of here. I want to thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you'll look forward to more of these plays. I think I'm going to be playing this a lot more here in the near future. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. So I hope to see you next time we get up in game. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.